guys welcome back to my channel it is time for january and february empties of 2023 so i like to do these like every two to three months and there's quite a little pile up here i'm also going to go through a couple of things that i am decluttering from my collection um, that i've been sitting around now this isn't like the full-on eyeshadow declutter that i've kind of been mentioning in videos it's just like a few little things that i just grabbed and was like yeah these aren't gonna work anymore so let's get into our empties yeah i finished up some uh jumbo cotton balls from target that's not that interesting um this is like the 200 count of the jumbo type that i always get um not necessarily from target but yeah i finished up a baby lotion from aldi's this is the colloidal oatmeal one it doesn't have like parabens in it and all that other stuff i'm not really crazy about stuff with fragrance in it for like lotions so this works pretty well i like quick absorbing kind of stuff so this is really good for that and i do feel like this actually made my skin pretty soft if you live near an aldi's and you're looking for like a fussy free type of body lotion i recommend this brand it's by little journeys so not bad and very cheap finished up this like random hand soap that is like obviously Christmas themed that my mom gave me a couple years ago and I only whip it out around the holidays because it just looks weird um like in the spring and the summer so I just put it away um during those months but yeah this wasn't really good I'm just gonna say that um no offense my mom doesn't have YouTube she doesn't watch me but, I, <laughs> but I'm just saying it's just like it wasn't very good it like kind of slid off your hands really weird so I'm really glad to get that finished um uh, finished another one of these also from Aldi's, the Little Journeys um, baby wash and shampoo that I use for makeup removal. I feel like I have one of these every single time I make an empties video. It's a huge bottle, but both my kids and I use it, so that's why. I finished a Beauty 360 100% Acetone Pro Strength nail polish remover. I will only ever use 100% acetone because it is the quickest. This Philosophy Purity Made Simple mask, I actually cut it open to get like the last bits out. This is the Pore Extractor Clay Mask that has salicylic acid and it's an acne treatment um so this mask i heard about this from coffee break with danny she did this series called what is this sorcery i don't know if she still does it it is a really good mask it does have fragrance in it i talk about fragrance a lot on here i feel like that's a really big factor for some people um for me at least and if you're very sensitive to that this does have that like very philosophy-ish type of fragrance not floral i don't think it's very unique to the brand i had to take a break um it was getting kind of noisy in my house but no this mask it's good it's just there's definitely a lot more to it than like a typical clay mask gritty texture um which you may or may not like so i've had this since probably 2021 maybe like that spring it took me two years to finish this so yeah it definitely made my skin softer i think but i don't know if it was like a miracle product though you know what i mean i did find it handy when i did have breakouts at least i like to think it was doing something but i don't really know <laughs> um it probably helped a little bit because of the salicylic acid but like nothing earth shattering maybe a repurchase but again that's I, I i don't really repurchase a ton of stuff in my life to be honest with you unless it's like a really good foundation or like really amazing so yeah all right next we have the ulta beauty liquid illuminator in starlight so this was in my project pan for 2023 and it was already pretty low when i brought it in because i was using it all last year it was the only liquid highlighter i had so i mean i enjoyed using it it wasn't super blinding but it definitely left like a nice glow i kind of just used it to like highlight the typical areas on your face i didn't like mix it with anything or put it in like lotion or anything like that so it took me a while to use this up but it's really really nice i would get this again if i was looking for a liquid highlighter but i'd rather try different things but honestly for highlighters i'm set because i have like tons of powder highlighters i know they're not the same formula but i don't need like a different formula of highlighter right now i'm not a repurchase at the moment i finished up the kiehl's creamy eye treatment with avocado i got this on black friday in 2021 so it took me that long to finish it up and this was pretty good um this was the bigger size i know this is like double the size of the typical one and it took me like yeah a year and it was pretty good it's a very dense formula and definitely moisturizing what i did find with this was that it would separate a little bit like the i guess the avocado oil would kind of yeah like separate you could see it sometimes and you'd have to like remix it every so often um wasn't really a big deal though um that to me just meant that there was actually avocado oil in there since you could actually see it um and yeah it was really nice dense formula very like luxurious feeling i don't typically suffer with like under eye like issues like really dry eyes or anything like that but i can imagine if you have really dry skin this could be really good for that i also was drawn to get this from like 
getting a little bit of milia like in this section. So I would bring it down a little bit and use it down here. Yeah, so for an eye cream, this is definitely really, really nice if you're looking for something really moisturizing. But towards the end, like before I finished it, it started getting really runny. So there was a point where you could kind of maybe turn it over and it wouldn't like pour out at all. But then, yeah, I found that it got really runny like the last couple months. And I'm pretty sure that was a sign it was like getting older and probably not how it was supposed to be. So, <laughs> so that is something that I would keep in mind for next time. So I probably wouldn't get this like huge jar of it if I ever were to get it again. I'm not someone who's like a stickler for eye cream at all. So I don't know if, if I'm the right person to repurchase this, if that makes any sense. Um, price wise, product wise, like it was great to try though. I do recommend it if you have really dry eyes. Um, I don't see myself getting it anytime soon, but I could see myself like maybe getting it on sale again in the future. I have this random um, Hershey Lodge <laughs> um, travel size body lotion that smells like chocolate. It came like you know, with the hotel toiletries. This was okay. I had two of them and I was kind of just keeping them because they were travel size. And you know, when I do travel, it's nice to have something small like this, but it's just too chocolatey scented. So now they're both gone. So that's awesome. Nothing to write home about. Like it's a hotel body lotion that just needed to get finished. It was a nice moisturizer though, just too chocolatey scented. I finished up this got to be Defiant Shine Pomade. This was sitting around in my collection forever. Um, back in the day when I got this, I had like maybe like a PCer type of haircut and this was like perfect for that. And I came close to decluttering this a couple times over the past two years because I was like, I'm not really using it. Maybe I'll get rid of it. And then I would like bring it back in and yeah. But then I found a way to use it with my hair texture and it's actually awesome for it. So yeah, like my hair, it can get a little bit frizzy after the shower. It's like a coarser texture. So it definitely benefits from having some product in there like this, even though this is a pomade. It's not known to like necessarily add moisture to your hair. It's more of like a texturizing product, but it actually worked to like keep my frizziness down. So I thought that was really interesting and very handy. So it did work for that, which I really appreciated. And I was glad I was able to like finish it up and like have a good purpose for it. Um, I wouldn't get this particular one again, just because like, this is gonna be superficial, but like the pa packaging's kind of obnoxious. Like I'm not into like bright orange, like bulky packaging. Um, I'd, I'd much rather like a squeeze tube or something like that. And the fragrance too, again, with the fragrance. Um, it's a nice smelling product, but it, it can be a lot. You know, it's very citrusy. Um, not a bad smell, but just, it, it hit you in the face kind of and it probably got worse as it got older so um good pomade very good pomade if you're looking for that kind of a thing i would probably go with a different product I have this beauty bio bright eyes depuffing and brightening eye gel packet so i have three of these three sets and got it free for my birthday in december and from ulta by the way and it was pretty nice i never used like a depuffing or any kind of eye gel so it was really nice and calming under the eye yeah, this one has restorative colloidal silver, which is supposed to help smooth the appearance of lines and wrinkles, which I only use this one time, so I don't know how effective this is, but um, at this time I don't really have like wrinkles as much yet. So I'm probably not the right person to ask if these actually work effectively. I would have to have used a bunch of these and like for a longer amount of time and have probably more wrinkles than I do right now to tell you if it made a difference, but it was very soothing. So I will say that much. Yeah, I still have two more left in the set. So I'm looking forward to using those when I eventually get around to using those. Finished up the Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator. This is the Tinted Skin Veil and mine was in the shade Light Medium. I cut it open and everything. So this was really, really nice, you know, more affordable than others. And I really enjoyed it. I thought this was very moisturizing and you know, offered like a nice base or like a nice, uh, not, you know, it's obviously not super full coverage cause it's like a tinted hydrator, but like decent enough. If you're, if you're not looking for like major coverage, this is a really nice product cause it does even out your skin tone really well. So I would definitely get this again. This was really, really nice. And the price was right. And you can get coupons and everything and bring the price down even more with drugstore stuff. So that's awesome. So yeah, I really, really like this. If you're not really into foundation, but you want a little bit more than like a basic skin tint, like this one is one to go for. I highly recommend this product. Okay, this is from a, it's one of those beauty subscription boxes that my friend had. This is a hair oil. So this is by Beauty Protector. This is a protector oil that keeps 
hair healthy and shiny and I guess you can use this almost as like a thermal protectant whether you're like heat styling or whatever. For me it was more of just like another type of defrizzing thing so I would just use it for that and I liked it. I did. Um, is it something I would repurchase? Mm, probably not. <laughs> um, I just was really on this like mission to use up all of my little like trial hair products that my friend gave me and like trying to shrink down my hair product collections. While this wasn't bad, it definitely doesn't stand out to me as something that like I need to buy because I'm sure there's like a million different types of hair oils on the market. Glad it's finished. Um, I finished a Laneige lip sleeping mask. So, you know, about Laneige, I'm sure by now, most of us have heard of this brand and have used this at some point, um, maybe. So, yeah, I mean, I like this. Uh, it's a very smooth, hydrating lip mask, but, you know, really nice to use. And this little, you know, packet here definitely lasted me like one or two weeks, maybe. It was nice. It was a nice formula. I just don't think I need to buy it, though. You know what I mean? Like, I have so many, like, lip balms, lip gloss, whatever, and they all kind of do the same thing. While it's nice, it's definitely not something I'm seeking out to buy at all. Like, if I get a free, like, sample of it, cool. But there are some, like, cool flavors that they have, like, I think there's like a mint chocolate one that was like limited edition and I would be interested in trying that but right now I'm okay. After I run out of my lip balms I might look for like a nicer more legitimate lip balm that doesn't like dry your lips out because a lot of them do. Um, I don't know if Laneige is one of them. There's like another brand called La La Lips that I keep seeing on like Instagram or Facebook and that's supposed to be good. So kind of got my eye on that. So this is more like house stuff. I've talked about Scentsy wax melts here and there on my channel and I finished up another one. This one is an autumn hearth. I'm trying to finish up like all of my scentsy stuff because I think I have like four other ones left but they're more like Christmas fall type scents so I don't really want to use them right now. Um, just on a mission to kind of like decrease my home fragrance. I really like this. They smell so good but yeah I don't want like a buildup of them in my house either because I don't really use home fragrance too much so I kind of want to get through some of these. Um, and it takes me a little bit longer to use these up because A, they are seasonal, like I said, and B, I don't use them every single day either. Because some of these can be really strong too, so, which is a good thing if you have like a bigger home maybe. My house isn't huge, so I can, we can really smell it and, uh, which is great, but then I have to like turn it off so that it doesn't get too strong and overpowering. But this one has a really nice smell. I love the smell of like fall, like apple and cinnamon and like all that but i also don't know if i would ever repurchase scentsy right now because they're kind of hard to get because you have to go through a consultant and sometimes i don't want to bother i'm just like too lazy to do that so i might look towards other brands if i ever use um any kind of wax melt i dyed my hair <laughs> yeah this is actually pretty good for the price i feel like revlon always had this line out but i just kind of went with other brands but this one does the job and it's cheaper than like the Garnier one. So highly recommend the Revlon one if you're looking for like a decent hair dye. This also is ammonia free, has keratin. But the thing with dyeing your hair, it's like, I don't know. It, it's one of those things you kind of have to keep up with if you want your hair to like maintain its color type of a thing. And I just don't always have time for that or energy. Like I have a few grays here and there, but sometimes I just let them come in and I just like, whatever because your hair's constantly growing in so there's always going to be grays at some point i can get a dye to last for maybe like three four weeks before it starts like fading out again and i'm just like i don't want to dye my hair every single month like that's way too much they recommend like giving maybe two to three months um and i don't really do like just root touch-ups either i like do the whole head which i'm probably not supposed to do but i want everything to be even so there's that but yeah use one of these up Go get it if you're interested in hair dye. So those are all of my empties. Let's talk about a couple of things I'm decluttering or thinking about decluttering. I am decluttering this Real Techniques foundation brush. Yes, it is dirty. Um, I'm probably gonna end up having to throw it out because it's starting to shed on the side here. Normally, I will still continue to use my brushes if they shed, but this one just is starting to get really, it's getting bad. Um, and every time I use it, it's starting to shed more and more like on my face, I'm not feeling that. A lot of my foundation brushes are starting to shed. Just the nature of using foundation on these brushes, like it's heavy usage and heavy washing because it's it doesn't just come off like powder products. 
So I really have to like get in there. I've had my foundation brushes for a couple of years now. So it's not like I just bought them and they're shedding. Like this is after like years and years of use, wear and tear. It seems like no matter what kind of brush I get with foundation, like a lot of them are starting to shed at this point because they're getting older. So I will have to look for replacements. So yeah, this one was really, really good though. I liked it. I actually had two of these and like the other one really like fell apart on me, like really weird. Cause I was expecting real techniques like to last a long time. All of my other Real Techniques brushes actually ha have lasted and are still going strong and doing really well, but they're also not foundation brushes. So again, I think it's just like the nature of the type of brush. I'm decluttering this eyeshadow. This is by Wet n Wild. This is from the Comfort Zone palette, like the OG one, the original. So this was one of my favorite colors. This was like the duochrome shade. It has a shift to it. It's like kind of pinky, but kind of green and gold. Really, really pretty. It just broke on me. I depotted a bunch of shadows and this one, the formula is just so soft on these and I didn't bother trying to repress it or anything because once it's broken once, that type of formula I could just see breaking over and over again. So even though it is super pretty, it's not one I think I'm going to miss. It's, it's really, really old first of all and I have so many other shadows. And while it is pretty, when it's actually on my face, it just looks like an eyeshadow, like anything else. You know what I mean? It's nothing like, I'm decluttering just the sample of Giorgio Armani um, Neo Nude uh, True to Skin Natural, Natural Glow Foundation like sample packets. They're obviously like not my shade. These could probably work nicely as a contour, but I'm trying to finish up one that I have. So no reason to keep something like that around. I'm decluttering two nail polishes. These are both by OPI. This one is called Suzy Skis in the Pyrenees. Dark charcoal gray, but with a hint of blue. It's really pretty. I love this nail polish and kind of sad. It just doesn't work well anymore. Yeah, it's just the formula is really sticky and goopy. And yes, I do have nail polish thinner, but you would need a ton of that. I already tried that route and it seems like you need way more of it than it's worth it. You're probably gonna end up using the whole bottle trying to thin this stuff out. So it's like, Let's just say goodbye. I've enjoyed it very, very much. You're not gonna be able to see it, but there is windowing here. So I used this a decent amount over the years. It's like so beautiful for winter, loved it. But alas, getting older and we need to let her go. <laughs> uh, this OPI shade is Sapphires in the Snow. Very pretty, like blue, violet. And this formula actually is still fine. It's just, not a color I want to keep anymore. I have a lot of these like really dark hue type of nail polishes and they all kind of look alike. I wore it recently and I was just like, I don't think I want something that colorful even if it's really dark um, and not super obvious. It was like, it was obvious enough for me and I just was like, I have enough dark nail polish. I don't need this particular color. It's not something that I gravitate towards anymore for my nails. So little by little, we're getting our nail polish collection to come down. So that's awesome. And two brushes that I'm considering decluttering, um, they actually were in my declutter pile, but then I'm like thinking about it because I'm running low on foundation brushes and I'm wondering if I should just keep them to have. Um, so two skunk brushes by Morphe. One is the M406 and the other is the M404. I don't know. I, I feel like no one ever talks about skunk brushes ever anymore. I never see anybody using them. I see them working really well for like really pigmented products that you're trying to like, you know, lighten up a little bit or whatever. I just like don't love them for foundation itself. The way you're supposed to use these is like go like this and then like blend it in. And I'm just like, that's way too much. And <laughs> why do that if you don't have to? And I honestly don't see the difference between using these and like my regular foundation brushes. So I'm contemplating getting rid of both of these, but I might not yet just because um, I, again, I'm running low on foundation brushes and they just may be something I keep around to use until I have replacements. But yeah, I don't know about these. Tell me what you guys think about skunk brushes. Again, I haven't seen people use these in like 10 years, <laughs> like seriously. And maybe for highlighter too, or like cream products, this would be nice, but I've been honestly doing fine without using these. So I don't know if they're just like taking up space and cluttering my collection right now. Kind of been putting these back and forth in declutters and non-declutters and all that stuff. And uh, I don't know, so. Tell me what you guys think. That is it for this empties slash mini declutter. If you're into, you know, maintaining a low buy or no buy, project panning, empties, um, occasionally, very occasionally, like a shot my stash type stuff, please join me. I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye.